Welcome to the fourth episode of Train Story Tales. Today we're going to be looking at the rake of five coat carriages, which forms our second train when we are running a two train service. As mentioned before, we don't restore rolling stock just for static display, with very few exceptions. And these five carriages that we'll be looking at today have all been fully restored and are used regularly. As you'll see, they're in the uh, olive green livery. That's from Southern Railway days, 1923 onwards. And uh, they look an impressive sight, especially when they're drawn by our locomotive in olive green as well. So these are the carriages, and we'll now be looking at the individual ones in more detail. This is carriage 2515, built in 1894. And I can claim a tenuous connection with this carriage, which I'll explain in a, in a minute. It came to the island in 1929. It had originally been built with six wheels, but by that time the middle wheels had been removed. It came to the island and saw service, as did all of these carriages, on the 55 miles of track on the island. It stayed in service until 1937, and it was sold in May of that year to a Mr. Everett Fry, a chemist from Newport. And he moved it to a farmer's field on the cliff at Bramble's Chine, and it there became a holiday home. My wife was a friend of the Fry's family, and uh, I spent a, a good summer occasionally going out there visiting uh, this when it was in effect a beach hut or a holiday home. It stayed there for 45 years, but in uh, 1981, the farmer wanted his land back. He had lost quite a bit of land in a recent landslip, and he gave notice to the Fry family saying, please remove your railway carriage. And that presented them with a dilemma. How would they move it and where would they put it? And no doubt their thinking was possibly along the lines of, we'll have to burn it and then remove the rubbish. Fortunately, they didn't do that. They consulted their solicitor, who happened to be a member of the railway. And to cut a long story short, it was given back to the railway. The railway moved it, brought it back to Haven Street, and there it laid until 2002, by which time it was fully restored and put back on the tracks. That year, it won the Heritage Railway Association Carriage and Wagon Competition. It was the overall winner, and there's a plaque on it to that effect. But when it was restored, it wasn't restored to its original condition. It couldn't be because its original condition would not have uh, complied with modern safety requirements. But they carried out a modification to it as well. And it's a modification which is actually very well hidden. It's behind me here. This compartment, at first glance, looks like any other compartment. But there's a hidden door, as it were, and it opens wide. And the reason it does that is to allow wheelchair access. And if we go inside, you can see on the left there, possibly, the big space there is. Ramps are put here for the uh, wheelchairs to be pushed up. Uh, room there for probably six wheelchairs in comfort. And if it's not needed for wheelchairs, then this seat just folds down to provide a comfortable seat. And so this carriage hasn't just been restored, it's been improved for modern day use. The next carriage I want to talk about is 2343. This carriage was designed by Robert Billington and built in 1876. It came to the Isle of Wight in 1925 and stayed in service only six years, coming out of service in 1931. At that time, it was sold off and became part of a bungalow at Gurnard Marsh. And it's quite surprising how many of our carriages have come from the Gurnard area. But it stayed as a part of a bungo until 1984, when it was offered back to the railway, given to us, came back to Haven Street, and it was restored into full 
service reaching the tracks in 1997. And here I am sat in the first class compartment of 6378. This carriage was built originally in 1886, didn't come to the island until 1927, but then saw 10 years service, being taken out of service in 1937. It was sold off and used as a garden chalet in a house at Rookley. There it remained until 1988 when it was acquired by the railway and it was restored back into fully working condition by 2009. Well here I am, this carriage is number 6336 and is our joint oldest carriage. In fact, the joint oldest carriage in regular service on the United Kingdom railways. 150 years old, the same as the uh, Oldbury carriage we looked at a couple of episodes ago. It came to the island in 1897 and stayed here in service until 1926. We don't know how, but somehow it was moved back across the Solent and became incorporated within a bungalow at Hailing Island. We've had a number of carriage bodies recovered from Hailing Island. But it came back to the Isle of Wight in 1975. A restoration commenced and it was our first grounded body to be restored. And it returned to service in 1986. And that year it won the Association of Railway Pre Preservation Society's Best Restored Carriage Award of that year. This is the final carriage, number 4115. Another Billington design carriage, built in 1896. It moved over to the Isle of Wight in 1925, but was taken out of service in 1931. It formed part of a bungalow at Rookley Green and stayed there until 2005, when it was returned to the Haven Street Railway. Work commenced on it and it was finished just last year, 2019. What is a little bit unusual about this one is that it has ducats. That's these bits sticking out at the back of the uh, guard's van. The idea being that the guard can look through them and have a better view up the train without losing his cap or getting wet if it were raining, if he was having to stick his uh, head out of a window. I'll show you, I'll demonstrate. One question we're often asked at Train Story is how much does it cost to restore one of these carriages? Well, very roughly £150,000 each. It can take three to four years normally. What that means is that over the last three episodes you have seen roughly one and a quarter million pounds worth of restoration. But the biggest cost is one we don't have. That is the number of volunteer hours which it takes. I haven't got a figure for that. I'm sure it is many thousands of hours for each carriage. In the next episode, I'll be talking about bogey coaches. And believe it or not, there is a connection between a bogey and the thing up your nose. See more next episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting.